Well, it may not look like it, but we are shifting gears into winter. Northwesterly flow sweeping through Texas. Cumulus and stratocumulus on its way south. And we're right on the frontal zone. And you can see that towering cumulus moving off towards the southeast. Taking a look at the surface map this afternoon, we've got this cold front extending from Ontario down through Indianapolis, down to Little Rock in Austin. And even in the Big Bend, winds are out of the north. North winds at El Paso, north winds at Phoenix, and we've got a cool 66 degrees there at Las Vegas. High pressure covering much of the western half of the country. And where is the core of the polar air? Well, we can use these thickness contours. We've got a 540 decameter contour over the Dakotas and parts of Minnesota. That is the core of the polar air. Let's take a look at a skew T in that area. That's pretty easy to do. We can go to Pivotal Weather and bring that up to 21Z and click in that uh, core of the cold air. And that gives us a three-dimensional picture. We can see some of the coldest air located right in here, about 750 millibars. That's going to be about 8,000 feet. And above that, the air just a little bit warmer in terms of potential temperature. In other words, if you brought this down to lower levels, it would be warmer than the air around it. So most of the cold air is in a layer below 10,000 feet. And this is probably the frontal inversion. So the air mass topping out at that level right there. Now we do have a variety of freeze warnings, frost advisories all the way from the western counties west of Lubbock up through Amarillo, through Kansas, and on up towards Aberdeen and Fargo. So it is going to be a cold night tonight. Out ahead of the cold air push, we've got some thunderstorms from the Ohio River Valley down towards the Memphis area, and even a severe watch box for Arkansas. And there it is, storms going up along the front, just north of Little Rock at the Sour, and those will be spreading into eastern Arkansas this afternoon. The storms appear to be pretty well sheared due to strong flow aloft. We do expect the jet to be parallel to the front, roughly like that, and that's going to carry those anvil tops off towards the northeast. And there's that watch box from SPC from just northwest of Arkadelphia up into the Jackson, Tennessee area. The SPC storm reports pretty sparse, a couple of reports of hail from earlier. What will those do? Let's take a look at the high resolution rapid refresh. Now I'm not analyzing these with a fine tooth comb or anything like that. I'm looking at the general character over the hours ahead. So we run that through and you can see that they expand in coverage along the length of that front. That front just kind of acting like a big squeegee and moving it eastward. And it looks like there is some, maybe a possibility of some isolated severe in Tennessee and along the southern borders. But let's take a look at the skewtees out ahead of it for this evening. We'll go up to maybe 7 or 8 p.m. Get out ahead of it there and pull up a scooty in the warm air mass. What does that air mass look like? Well, yeah, there is going to be some shear. You can see that slight curvature in the hodograph there. The probable hazard type going for tornadoes, but this does tend to over forecast during strong forcing like we have with this front. So we may not actually see that. Here on this SRH product, you can see the boundary moving rapidly to the east there in Tennessee. Now we can't rule out the possibility of QLCS tornadoes. Those are the weaker types of tornadoes we find along squall lines. There's not going to be any way to forecast that. We just have to kind of watch the evolution of these storms. But I'm not really looking for anything widespread tonight and just cross-checking that with the Memphis forecast discussion, we scroll down here. The soundings suggest conditions favorable for supercellular storms that have the potential 
to produce tornadoes, but straight line wind damage is the most likely mode of severe weather. Again, that's relating to the strong forcing that we're seeing. Then taking a look at the Nashville discussion, they've done the same thing as me, but they've taken a look at the NAM nest model, and they looked at that, and they're seeing mostly potential for straight line winds. If we put this out ahead of the storms, once again, the DK values not particularly high, only about 600. And in a situation with lots of straight line winds, we want to see that up above 1,000. So really, I'm not expecting a whole lot. Out of the storms tonight, there could be some isolated severe weather, but I think it's going to be mostly dominated by that fast-moving cold front. And a quick check of conditions out there in the North Pacific. It is stormy. There's another system heading for the British Columbia coast. That's probably going to be due in tonight or tomorrow. You can see that warm front there approaching the Washington coast. Pretty quiet up in Alaska, teens and 20s. So we are seeing that definite changeover to wintry weather. A little bit of snow here and there. And then for eastern Canada, weak system going through the Hudson Bay region. And one thing that's notable is the temperatures are a little bit mild. If we go up north, up to the Arctic, we can see a lot of 30s. So we are transporting some warm air up the east side of this occluded system. And that's leaving us with temperatures just above freezing. And you have to go north of this little warm front to find the cooler weather. So it's been kind of a slow change over to cold weather. I think we should be running temperatures a little bit colder up there this time of year. But change is inevitable. So speaking of change, let's take a look at our temperatures. These are the records for today, this afternoon. These are forecast highs. Looks like it's going to break the record for the date in the Tri-Cities in far eastern Tennessee, 84 there. And also, what is that, Elkins, West Virginia, 83. And then tying the record up in Connecticut and in Columbia, South Carolina. And all the other numbers, those are approaching the record highs. The summary, lots of warm weather from the Texas Gulf Coast all the way up towards the northeast U.S. So that's going to be the last of the summer weather in many parts of the east for tomorrow morning, here comes the cold weather in the Texas Panhandle, coming down to 37 around the Amarillo area, 36 at Childress and 30 at Winslow. And then for afternoon highs, coming up to 70s and 80s along the East Coast, 75 in Connecticut. And that's about the only record breaker that I see. There's the records for Sunday. One little 49 there at Victoria, Texas. And you know the takeaway not seeing very many records here. The takeaway from that is we're actually returning to seasonal values. This is not a severely cold outbreak. We're just bringing in the kind of weather that we should be seeing in October. A little bit of warm weather hanging on in South Florida coming up to near 90. And you can see that those hot temperatures are gone along the East Coast. And then finally for Monday, here's what we're looking at. Still warm in Florida for the afternoon highs, but the morning lows, 41 there at Arcata. So I guess we're bringing in a little bit more cold air on Monday. And here it is on the 850 millibar temperature anomaly. Going to the weekend, you can see the cold air spreading eastward, taking a track towards the Carolinas by Sunday and Monday. Maybe a little bit of cold air damming setting up for Sunday. And then warm temperature spreading into the Dakotas and Montana. That's a pattern we see with downslope flow in that part of the country. There's the outgoing high across Texas. The last of the cold air spreading southeast. So we're going to have a couple of cold nights in Texas. And then on the western periphery of that, you get the counterclockwise flow around the anticyclone, and that brings up warm air advection from the desert southwest. So we're going to see a warming trend for Monday in that part of the country. But out there along the west coast, there's that cold air 
producing those record temperatures at Arcata, heading right into Northern California and down the San Joaquin Valley, and then on into the Great Basin area and the southwestern deserts for Tuesday. So it's a little bit of a El Nino type setup. More cold air working eastward, and eventually that will filter into the Great Plains around midweek. Another bit of cold air coming down in the wake of the system in the Great Lakes for Thursday, but overall pretty mild down in the southern part of the nation. Some cold air expected to come south there through the Great Lakes at the end of next week. So very cold once again for the northeast U.S. And some of that will make its way into the southern part of the U.S. So let's take a gander around parts of the U.S. It is clear as a bell in the southwestern U.S. And I like seeing the absence of forest fires. And it looks pretty good for North California as well. A picture-perfect day. As we head north, we get closer to that frontal zone. Clear skies for the most part, but we can see some transverse banding as we get close to Astoria, Oregon. And that's associated with the faster flow, the more humid air in that region. And then we land in Washington and we get smack dab in the warm air advection zone ahead of that front, which as you saw earlier, was right down here. That's that warm front heading for the Washington coast. Montana in a humid northwesterly flow. They've got a lot of moisture coming over the mountains there and gravity waves setting up. You can see that these waves there in the western part of the state near Kalispell, those do not move at all. They're pretty much locked to the terrain. And I'm sure right here there's some probably very spectacular Standing lenticular out to cumulus. I would love to be in this area around sunset, looking off to the west. Probably some great photo opportunities there in Montana. And looking a little bit further east, well, that's going to be snow. And if you remember back on Wednesday, our weather map looked like that. That's that wraparound, very cold air coming in the backside of that system with lift on the western periphery of that cyclone. And that gave us those bands of snow back there in southeastern Montana. A very nice day in the Denver area, further east on the plains, Nebraska, we've got northwesterly flow. And if you look at the mid-level charts, they've got some instability back behind the main wave right here, some cold air advection in the mid-levels, kind of a cold column. And if we look at a sounding through that region, you can see the very steep lapse rates from the surface. Up to 10,000 feet, you get up to the top of that frontal zone. We get that inversion, but down beneath it, that's where we have some of that lift, kind of an inverted V sounding and some steep lapse rates helping to produce that stratocumulus right in that layer right there. And that's probably high enough to actually be out to cumulus. There's that frontal zone moving through Texas. You saw a little bit of that on the opening clip. Moving out that moisture, kicking that out. We had dew points of around 73 to 75 yesterday, and we're replacing that with much drier air. But further south, some showers kicking up around San Antonio and a few anvils showing up closer to the Texas Gulf Coast. And there's those thunderstorms up there in Arkansas. We already saw that. And a few out ahead of the line in northern Mississippi and Alabama. Further to the southeast, kind of a stable regime there. Not very much going on. And you can see some sea breezes right there along the Florida coast. They have not moved very far inland. A nice day as well in the Carolinas, Virginia, West Virginia. We are picking up some faster flow up to the northwest as that next system approaches. And there's the Great Lakes, some showers and storms in that region. And up in the northeast U.S., you remember we have that warm front 
right in this area here, we're getting a little bit of lift and convergence along that front, which is enough to support these showers and storms around Syracuse, Rochester, and then further north. Well, I don't know if we have any viewers in that part of Canada, but uh, some interesting patterns up there. That's that occlusion there in Quebec and got that cold easterly flow out ahead of it. And on the other side, some cold air advection also on the west side of that zone. And that'll do it for this edition of Forecast Lab. I want to remind you to please help support this program. If you can't uh, contribute on Patreon, just head to weathergraphics.com and pick up a book or some software, and that will help us out tremendously. Anyway, I hope you have a great weekend. We'll see you supporters on Monday and everybody else on Wednesday. Have a good one. Bye-bye.